having an absolutely fantastically wonderful day. Um, let's talk about area and perimeter a little bit here. So this is what we've been talking about the last couple of school days. Uh, and so what I did before uh, I, you guys got to school today was I drew a rectangle with the centimeters side of my ruler and it is seven centimeters in length and four centimeters in width. So there's two different things that we've been doing lately. We've been doing perimeter, which is all the way around the outside, which you need four numbers to do. Because when you add for perimeter, you add length plus width plus length plus width. And as we talked about before, whatever is on this side is also on that side. So if that's a 17, that's a 17. If that's a four, then that's a four. So for a perimeter, which I'm going to put as P, we would just add 17 plus four plus 17 plus four. Now, obviously, I wouldn't typically add it across like this. I would put them uh, up on top of each other, right? But remember, you can add these in any order you wish. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could always even just add the fours first and then be like, oh, okay, I guess over to the side, I'll do like 17 and I'll do another 17 and then I'll do eight because that's four plus four. Again, you can do it, you can add the these two and then it doesn't really matter which way you add it, but that would be give you your answer and you need to make sure that your answer has a label and your label is whatever the unit of measure is. So in this case, it would be centimeters, right? Now, that's for perimeter, right? Perimeter is adding. Now, you should have your math notebook in front of you. You should have your notes out. I'm not asking you to draw this. I'm not asking you to write anything down right now. But when you do the assignment that comes next, you should have your notes ready so that you can remember the difference. If you do not have those notes, if they are totally gone, if the uh, tornado came and took them away, then what you should do right now is in your notebook or in a blank piece of paper, write a couple, jot down a couple of quick notes to remind yourself how to do this. Because I do not want you going into the next assignment, which is the Google slide, having absolutely no recollection of what the difference is of how to solve perimeter versus area. Okay, so this is on you. You need to make sure that you either have your notes from last week or you quickly jot down some new notes. Not every single thing I'm doing here, capiche? Now, area is the amount on the inside, okay? And in order to do area, we multiply, okay? And we multiply length times width. For area, we only need two numbers. Now, you might be thinking, Mr. Brown, uh, 17 times four, that's not on a multiplication chart. How am I supposed to do that? Well, there's actually a really easy trick that you could do for a two digit times a one digit, which means you can take the two digit and you can write it in expanded form. You can expand it. This is the number in the tens place. This is the number in the ones place. And you take each of those numbers and you multiply it by four. It's actually pretty darn easy. Okay, like in this case, let's see, that would be 10 times four and seven times four. Okay, and you do those separately. So 10 times four is 40, seven times four leaning on the gate who lives there 28, and then you just add both of those together, which in this case would be 68. Now, here's the thing the label for area is different than the than the label for perimeter for perimeter it's just whatever it is centimeters kilometers whatever this is you know but for this it's either you have to put square centimeters this is the abbreviation for square centimeters or sometimes you see it like this the, the, whatever the unit is with a little tiny two next to it, that would mean centimeter squared. But it's very important that for area, you actually put this. So here's a little trick for how you can multiply two digit numbers. And again, hey, if you want to jot this down, take a moment, jot it down. That, that's great. Okay. Absolutely. You can do that. Pause this, rewind, do whatever you need to do. But also remember that the differences in the labels between area, which is multiplying, and 
perimeter, which is adding all four sides, one, two, three, four. Now, what if you see I have a situation like this, where they give you uh, the length, they give you the area inside, they give the, the, the answer, but they don't give you what the width is. So in order to do a problem like this, well, you know that it's seven times something gives you 35. You're finding the missing uh, piece in this multiplication problem. Like, well, Mr. Brown, I don't remember my sevens super duper well. What do I do if that's the case? And notice how up here I wrote it in square centimeters, or remember it can also be written centimeters squared. That's why I put that little star there. So, well, what am I supposed to do if I don't know my sevens? Well, please remember that all multiplication is just repeated addition. So in other words, like 12 times five is the same as 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. Plus 12. Th th these are the same, okay? So what you could do if you are absolutely in a bind is you could just keep adding sevens as many times as you can until you get to this target number. Let's see, seven plus seven is 14, uh, plus seven is uh, 21, plus another seven is 28, plus seven, oh, I see, it's five. Now, <clears throat> so that would be your missing piece. Now, let's quit this here and let's go to today's actual assignment, which is this right here, okay, the area and perimeter one. Now, I've got some advice, and not only some advice, but some rules that you really need to follow when you're doing this, okay? A, I want you to start on slide number three, okay? And I really, honestly, take, jot this down on a piece of paper. Start on three, okay? Because I don't want you, I don't need you doing every single one. You're not going to have time to do every single one, but I want you to do a variety of different examples. For some of the first, like, I don't know, quite a few slides, you'll notice that there's a grid in the background, which means that for, for perimeter, you can literally count the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, well, you know, it's a square anyways, but you get the idea. And for the inside, you can even count the squares. You could literally count every single one of these for area, do, 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 do and count all of them. Uh, and your answers are down here somewhere. Now, that will, that will take a very long time. You could still solve it the other way, you know, this plus this plus this plus this for perimeter, or this times this for area, okay? But counting the squares takes a while. Um, I understand if you're absolutely struggling with this, that's cool, but I do not want you to spend the rest of the math period only doing the examples that have a grid behind it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Eventually, you've got to get to one like this, okay, where there is no grid. So make a note somewhere, anywhere, that I want you to make sure that you skip ahead to nine and you do some of the ones after this because this is when you actually have to do uh, add this number plus this number. Remember, whatever's on this side is on this. So 12 plus 18 plus 12 plus 18, and that will give you the perimeter. Now, I, under, I give you permission if it is a two digit by two digit, I give you permission to, you could take a guess for area, but we have not done two digit by two digit multiplication. We haven't done that, okay? Um, 20 times nine is the same as nine times two with a zero after it. So we, I've just told you how to do that. And then for the perimeter, remember perimeter is adding, check your notes, okay? I want you to promise me right now that you're going to spend some time trying out some of these examples, okay? Here's one that's very similar to what we were doing before. Okay, now again, if the numbers are a little intimidating, pick one that isn't so intimidating. Okay, try to find one that, that, that's not so bad. Okay, 
Um, and I'll give you another little hint with something like this. Let me go back to this one right here, okay? 20 times 30. You're like, no way can I do that to find the area. Here's the deal. Two times three with an add two zeros after it. Seriously, that's, that's the answer. This example right here is similar to what I just showed you before on the piece of paper. Take the 13, break it up into a 10 and a three. Nine times 10, nine times three, add them together. That's your area. And of course, perimeter is just adding numbers. 23 plus five plus 23 plus five. That's just adding stuff. So I do give you permission to leave certain ones blank if you're really struggling with the multiplication. I get that. But there's a wicked lot of things here you, can, you, could, you should still be able to do and still try. Just don't spend the entire time on the gritty ones, please. I want you to try your best to really explore this and skip around and do different types. Okay? Um, and let's see what we've got down here. Um, the rectangle of this driveway is four times as long. That's a future lesson. We haven't really gone there for something like this. So if you're looking at something, you're like, what? You know, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, you know, just do the ones that, that, we, that we think we, we, can, we can do. Um, so again, skip around. Don't spend the entire time on the gritty ones. Do one or two gritty ones, but that is it. And then really explore and try the best that you possibly can with that multiplication for the area. All right, folks, have an absolutely fantastically wonderful day. Uh, and let's go for it. We've got this.